Hello and welcome to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Geraldine Bisset Joseph. Now today we're going to be talking about the British Shevening Scholarship Program and I'm joined by two ladies, that is Ayodele Hippolyt of the British High Commission and Miss Le, Mrs. Sorry, Lavon Verdant Daisy who is actually a scholarship alumni. So yes. thank you for joining us today ladies. Thank you for thank having you for us. Having. Okay, now let's find out more about the program. Right. Tell me a little bit about what the initiative is, what the scheme actually pertains. Right, so the Shevening Scholarship is the UK government scholarship program mm -hmm. that funds master's studies in the main, but postgraduate study, uh, fully funded, mm -hmm. and it is run by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in, uh, in collaboration with other development partners. But the idea behind this particular scholarship uh, that the UK government funds is to engender, develop leaders, leaders mm -hmm. influencers, uh, decision makers, people who can transform their social context, their mm -hmm. community, their society. Mm -hmm. So the evening has that particular focus mm -hmm. and as we talk some more you'll realize it's not just about academic potential or academic uh, brilliance. Right. It's about people who are socially engaged, mm -hmm. who want to tackle the challenges that they see in mm -hmm. their, in their, as I said, social context, community, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not just about being bright. Okay. You also have to be somebody who cares about your society and you want to do something about it. Okay, no problem. Now, on reading up on the scholarship, um, like you were saying, I saw that um, the scholarship's actually awarded to what they deem exceptional individuals with leadership potential. That's right. Break that down for us. Exactly what kind of an individual are, are we talking about? Okay, so I'll answer and then let Lavon, who is an example of that <laughs> okay. as, a, as a scholar. Uh, we're looking at people who are not afraid to see a problem, identify it, and tackle it. Okay. So in the interview process, it, it's not just about how well you did in your first degree, because mm -hmm. you must have a first degree, mm -hmm. but it's also identifying that particular issue or problem okay. that you see and having ideas mm -hmm. about how to deal with it, having a vision. So I've, I've, I've said in other uh, publicity appearances that it's almost having a, an ethos or philosophy about how you tackle the particular problem that you see and identify. And that person must be proactive. That person must be dynamic, have energy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really what we're looking for. Um, okay. you, when you talk to Lavoie, you, she can say, oh, she fits into that. But obviously, she's an example of that, having been a scholar and returning this year. Mm -hmm. So that's what it really means. Okay. And it comes out in, from the application process where they ask you to explain why it is that you want to study that particular course of study and how it will help you to tackle the issues uh, back in your society. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So leading on from that, if you can um, just break us, in, in your own opinion mm -hmm. and through your own experience mm -hmm. as someone who applied for mm -hmm. the scholarship, yes. what, what did, you, did you actually add to your application that you think that the, 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 the scholarship awardees were looking for? Okay, I think um, for me it was narrowing down those things that I think distinguished me from the average young person. Okay. I know there are thousands of young people on island and even more young people around the world. Mm -hmm. And our experiences aren't very different. Mm -hmm. And just coming back home to St. Lucia, mm -hmm. I've, I, there is an obvious need to distinguish while everybody, for instance, may be involved in youth development, which mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. at the district level, at the national level, and I represented St. Lucia as a Commonwealth Youth Ambassador. It went beyond stating those titles to speak into things, specific contributions. Oh, okay. So whether it was the process evaluation or process development or stakeholder engagement or output reformatting or the monitoring of something, but it spoke to more or less the improvement mm -hmm. or extension mm -hmm. of an idea, mm -hmm. a plan, a project program, mm -hmm. and ensuring at the same time that the key stakeholders are involved and that the desired outcomes are realized. Okay. So I think that is that may have been. I didn't <laughs> see everybody else's, okay. but that may mm -hmm. have contributed to my being selected. And I know that I was very specific based on the support I got from other scholars mm -hmm. 
especially her who knew me personally, who kept probing and saying, but you didn't say you did that. You could say that better. Mm -hmm. Expand on that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's yes. what I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you are, it's very, in, I like the idea of getting the, the whole experience um, story from you. So mm -hmm. if you could just elaborate on that and tell us a little bit about why this scholarship, more than maybe any others, appealed to you. And, and it was one that when you saw, you were like, yeah, maybe that's, that's the scholarship for me. What, what was it that appealed to you? For me, I'm not an athlete, so <laughs> by, <laughs> okay. So obviously, I wouldn't qualify for certain scholarships. Mm -hmm. And it, it was about identifying something. I'm very competitive. Okay. I don't always get through with everything I attempt the mm -hmm. way I want to. Mm -hmm. But it's about being strategic. Okay. And it's about realizing that those things that were required, that I had it in some form, Brilliant. and it was being able to reflect it adequately. Mm -hmm. So they wanted leadership, and as I said, I had done it on different levels. They wanted people who had networked, and because of my involvement, I had worked with CARICOM, with Commonwealth, locally with Pan America Health Organization, local mm -hmm. offices, and Ministry of Health, so I had that. Okay. And they wanted people who had a plan, and I always have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just about tightening that plan and explaining how my past experiences feed into where I hope to be, or right at least my immediate projections, mm -hmm. yes, would allow me to see myself placed. And so that is what it was for me. Okay, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for us to have a very short break. When we come back, I want to hear all about the application process because I want everybody out there to understand exactly what they have to actually do to see yes. if they have a chance That's right. with being awarded the scholarship. That's right. So we'll be back in a few seconds. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt as proof of the transaction is available. Welcome back to Interview. I am Jolene Bissett Joseph, and today we are talking about the British Evening Scholarship Program. Now, ladies, before we went to break, I was saying to you, I really want to hear about the application mm -hmm. process because okay. there's many out there that That's most probably right. would like to yes. know what to do. Right, so the requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you must have a first degree. Okay. There was a, there was, there was a time back, because I'm a former scholar myself, and back when I applied, uh, I think you could get away with like a postgraduate diploma or something like that, mm -hmm. but it's become so competitive, mm -hmm. as Lavon hinted at, that a good first degree, and not just any, it has to be a, a second class honors. So, okay. or, yeah, so it's, even, it's not a just pass first degree, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You also need to um, have about two years work experience. They like that. Uh, Lavorne um, talked about having networked and the things she had done. That counts. Mm -hmm. But what I like about this particular scholarship is that there's no upper age limit. A okay. lot of scholarships have a cutoff point where they're That's 35. Great, yeah. It's great. So you can be 55, 60, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh. Once you have a first degree, mm -hmm. and once, obviously, by that time, you had more than two years' work experience, <laughs> and you uh, have what Lavorne uh, talked about in terms of a vision, a plan for how you're going to tackle a particular issue, mm -hmm. then you are eligible to apply. Obviously, you have to come from the same which is achieving country, so mm -hmm. there are eligibility requirements in terms of that. Mm -hmm. So if you're from another island or other place, you have to make sure that that place is achieving in country, right? Mm -hmm. Which basically means part of the, being part of the Commonwealth. Right. Um, so uh, th those are some of the basic uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, but the essential thing, uh, apart from having that academic uh, requirement and the years of work experience, is that vision, Geraldine, okay. and what, La what Lavorne said, and I'm glad she's here, obviously that's why she's here to explain mm -hmm. how important it is to be specific okay. and to be very clear about how you plan to tackle what whatever issue it is that you say you're going to tackle. Mm -hmm. And I, I must say this, I do think that if two scholars or two candidates go up against each other, they're both academically at the same level. Mm -hmm. The person with that vision and the person with, with that clear um, idea mm -hmm. will get the edge. Okay. So it, so when Lavorne talked about her, her involvement in you know Commonwealth Youth Program and so on, very important. So even if you're not civically engaged at the moment, have some idea of how you'd become civically or socially engaged, right? But you must have that idea of how you're going to come back and contribute meaningfully mm -hmm. to your society. 
Okay, all right. So those are the, and go on to, yeah, so quickly, it's done, on, everything is done online. Okay. So www.chiefning.org, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you will get the info. Everything is done online initially. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah, so they yeah. do that initially. Mm -hmm. Then they to, they make sure that, that, that your eligibility criteria are there, mm -hmm. and then from that, they do a long list. Okay. And then from that long list, okay. then they pick out, okay, we like these people. Mm -hmm. Then they interview you. Okay. And that's done about February 2020, March 2020, that kind of time. Mm -hmm. And then it's the interview now mm -hmm. that things get serious. Mm -hmm. Because now everybody bright, everybody's brilliant. Who are you? And you really have to be authentic and be serious and real about what you say that you're going to do. And by then, all the references and that sort of things, you need referees, the usual things. Mm -hmm. But the important thing I want, and I'm sure Levon can say more about this, is to be passionate and it's to be real about what it is you say you're going to do because you're also required to come back mm -hmm. after the scholarship. You can't just take off to the UK and never return. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to come back and put into practice mm -hmm. what you say that you were going to do. And quickly I have to say they don't make any restrictions on which university in the UK. It doesn't matter. Ask, it doesn't okay. matter about the course. Mm -hmm. That's why achieving such a great scholarship. Fully, fully funded. They don't pay for a thing. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you where to study or what to study. Oh, wow. Once it, it is in line with what you say you're going to do and how it's going to come to your society, mm -hmm. that's all they require from you. Brilliant. Yeah, Lavorne can talk more about what she did and why, okay. you know, and where. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, please do. Yeah. Please elaborate, yeah. Okay, I did a Master's in Science at the University of East Anglia mm -hmm. in Impact Evaluation for International Development. Mm. I chose Impact Evaluation because I have a very quantitative academic background. So, I have a Master's in Actuarial Sciences mm -hmm. and I have an, I apologize, I have a bachelor's degree in actuarial sciences okay. and I have a master's in project management but mm -hmm. I noticed very quickly that in the region we outsource a lot of the impact evaluators mm -hmm. and we also have a situation where we do a lot of m and which is good but in terms of establishing the difference between causality and correlation so mm -hmm. you may see certain outcomes but extracting it so that you are affirmative with regards to whether the impact of an after-school program, for instance, is based on your implementation of the after-school and not because of support from probably parents or something. Mm -hmm. Using numbers is something that we didn't have. And so I noticed that niche and not just distinguishing me for shivening, but coming back home, it would have raised the bar with regards to our prospects for speaking to our donors and reporting properly what we do. So that is why I chose that. Okay, brilliant. Okay. okay. Now time is really running out on us very <laughs> fast. So before we do um, head out though, I want to just get from both of you why, like maybe even give a call to action for people to just explain to them why it's important to, if you something has clicked after hearing what you've had to say, mm -hmm. they should really make that application to okay. see if they can I'll get on I'll be scholarship. quick because I want LaVorne to have the last word. Okay. Very quickly, fully funded mm -hmm. everything from your airfare to the tuition to your books to uh subsistence you pay for nothing mm -hmm. that alone so fully funded the uk experience experiencing yeah. another culture mm -hmm. experiencing another way of life in a, in a in a in a metropolitan place and you can study anywhere in the uk so that's mm -hmm. either england uh, wales or scotland mm -hmm. right and and meeting others like yourself and other people not like yourselves mm -hmm. uh so so it's it's a brilliant opportunity for which you pay nothing and then you get the chance to come back and be a meaningful part of your society brilliant. that's why you should okay for me it would have to do with that professional component that is added to the academic experience because mm -hmm. it's a lot more than the books and even mm -hmm. the technology mm -hmm. but meeting with the professionals the expanded network and the ability to challenge your thought because there's something that happens when there are too many bright people in the room yeah. <laughs> that forces you to notice that <laughs> okay so. probably i have not thought of this adequately yeah, so yes okay. there's that opportunity mm -hmm. yes through that scholarship yeah. experience in the uk that really changes somebody's mindset Brilliant. i think so yeah i okay. think they'd be exceptionally placed if they apply and once they get through they'd be better for it right. and the deadline okay. is november 5th thank <laughs> you yes. well ladies thank you for joining me today <laughs> it's been a wonderful discussion mm -hmm. and i'm sure everybody's out there is very happy to yes. hear a little bit more about thank the scholarship you program. thank you Geraldine. excellent <laughs> thank you for being here with us at interview however for now bye-bye <laughs>